Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Modest apparel. What does modest mean? Covered up. So, what does the Bible say about what you got on, sis? No, I'm just saying, though. We have to understand, man. The Bible says that, hey, if, let's say that you're a man, right? We, was, we came in the world with no clothes on, though. So, we're supposed to just walk around there? I, I like to get away. So, you, you, like, you like to walk around there? I people are bugged out their mind, man. Listen, I people are bugged out their mind, man. Listen, hey, if you're going to make crazy statements, we're going to move on to somebody that really want to get no, some I'm understanding. The truth, hey, you just say you'd rather walk around naked. Yeah. But when it comes wintertime in Georgia, what you going to do? You're going to have hypothermia. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, 28, man. Playing semantics. Think it's a game. It's not a game. That a lot of people vote because of a lot of people died for the right to vote. Uh, they want to change society. Why did you vote? Yeah, honest. Okay, okay. Hey, that, that's your that, that was your opinion. You you see a party that you don't want in the in, in the office and you want them out of it, right? So name me some of the things that the other party is gonna do for you. So you don't even know none of the party policies that you voted for. That's the that's crazy, man. Because we have to understand this, look, look, let's say this, right, right? Let's say that we vote, but then the policies of the people that we voted for, just because we don't like somebody else, their policy is to shoot all black people. I know that's not his policy, but what if that was his policy? And you voted for him, you didn't even know. At the end of the day, let me show you what the Bible says about voting right quick, man. Because at the end of the day, when we voted for King Saul, you ever hear the story of Samuel when King Saul was over Israel? You ever heard of that? Watch this right here. I'm going to show you what God has to say about voting. Read. Deuteronomy 17, verse 15. Thou shalt any, and any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. So God is as it chose, what was it, just the uh, 45th president? God didn't choose the 40, 45 presidents since they came onto this planet. He didn't choose them. God didn't choose them. God chose his son, Jesus Christ, to be over us. That's what the Bible says. So it says, set a king over you that God chose. Read. One from among thy brethren. One from among your brethren. So it has to be of your people. It has to be of your people. It can't be of somebody else. So let me show you who your people are right quick. Watch this. So where do you see your people? Where do you see your people at? The top left. The top left? Okay. The 12 tribe sign, where you see your people at? Where's your people at? Where are you from? American Black, West Indies, Haitian, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans, where are you from? Which one? What about you, sis? Where did you see yourself on this time right here? We gotta know who we are so we can know that we can vote for a king that's of our brethren. I'm gonna show you who you are, man. Do number 28. Because look, you, you gave me the, the most honest answer. Bring the camera over here. You gave me the most honest answer that anybody has ever told me in regards to um, in regards to why they voted. You said you just wanted some, you know, you wanted somebody else out of office. Well, guarantee this. Guess what? A lot of people voted just because they wanted Obama out of office, and a lot of people voted because they wanted to see a black man in office. When he got in office, he didn't do anything for our people. Understand that? A lot of people like to blame things on Trump. A lot of things started with Obama. Right. A lot of things started with Bush. A lot of things started with George Washington. A lot of people started with everyone else. And each, and each president inherits the bad decisions or the decisions that was told to them by the advisors by the, the previous president. That's right. So Trump inherited the, uh, the uh, orders that Biden and Obama did to lock up all these 500 plus kids 
in cages, and they don't know where their parents are. That started under Obama and Biden. A lot of people don't know that, but a lot of people go and vote for Biden, but he started locking up your kids way before they came on this planet. Right. They called you super predators, along with Hillary Clinton, who y'all voted for the year before that. Y'all don't know that. Watch this, Deuteronomy 28, read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 28. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. God said he's going to smite us with madness. What is madness? It's not just talking about craziness. It's literally talking about insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something different to come out. We've been voting for years and years and years, and nothing has changed. How are they still using the same tactics to keep you from voting when opposed, supposedly you overcame that years ago? They still using the same using the same voting oppression that way you that they used back in the day. Right. So where did you move from? You understand? God says don't vote for somebody that's not your people. God says set up his son over God's people. That's what the Bible says. But our people don't want to hear that. Our people would rather go buy and sell on the Sabbath day. Have you ever heard of the Sabbath day? Fourth be the day. Okay, it's fourth be the day. Hey, brother, you ever heard of the Sabbath day, sir? You ever heard of the Sabbath day? day. Okay, so he, he said it's supposed to be the day. What day do you think the Sabbath day is? <laughs> sir? Sir, I can't, I, I'm sorry, it's a man. I can't. Friday evening. Friday evening? Okay, since have you ever heard of the Sabbath day? Have you ever heard of the Sabbath day? Have you ever heard of the Sabbath day? Yeah, you, you sit, eat the chips, the fry. Have you ever heard of the Sabbath day? When is the Sabbath day? Come, hey, come learn, come learn and see what the Sabbath day is right quick. Y'all heard it with shot. I say Sunday. You say Sunday? He said, he said it's supposed to be today. So we got two answers. We got to figure out which one is true, right? Today is Saturday. So let's see what the Sabbath day is. Give me answers, chapter 20. Watch this. Here we go. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. What day is Sunday of the week? Sunday is the first day of the week. So the seventh day of the week is what? Saturday. So the Sabbath is Friday, Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday. Right. I'm going to tell, tell you where you got uh, Sunday is the Sabbath from. You got it from your church. You got it from Christianity. You got it from a religion. God never gave us a religion. God gave us the Bible that we're supposed to keep His commandments. Come look at this sign right quick before you go. Come look at this sign right quick. I see y'all sign. Watch this. Look at this sign right quick. I watch y'all preach the other um downtown. Where do you see yourself on this sign right here? You too, mama. Where do you see yourself on this sign right here? Y'all go to church? Y'all believe in the Bible? You love God? Yeah, I believe in the Bible. Okay, then. So we're reading the Bible. Come close, man. <laughs> we're reading the Bible. So you see what happened to the southern kingdom of Israel. Mm -hmm. Did that not happen to our people? Yokes of iron in their neck? Mm -hmm. Did that not happen to the Native Americans mm -hmm. when they were slaughtered? Mm -hmm. So God says that stuff is going to happen to the Israelites. It didn't say it's going to happen to any other nation of people. Right. So who is that happening to today? Us. So what does that make us? Israelites. We the Israelites. And as the Israelites, it's something that we got to do. We got to keep God's commandments. And it starts with keeping the Sabbath day. So we're going to go over the Sabbath day some things because you, you thought it was Sunday. We just learned that it's no, not. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know it's Saturday. I know Sunday starts the first day of the week. Right. Let me get something on the Sabbath day. You got something? Give me Nehemiah 1031. Nehemiah 1031. We're going to show you some things that you got to do on the Sabbath day. So that way, next time, you don't do it. That's called repentance. That's how we fix ourselves. I, mean, I know what we ain't supposed to do. What? We ain't supposed to work and do a lot of other stuff, but guess what? What? We ain't supposed to do nothing on the Sabbath day. Though. Can you breathe on the Sabbath day? Yes. Can you teach the word of God on the Sabbath day? Yes. Can you drive on the Sabbath day? You can teach the word of God any day. Not can you just on the but I'm, saying, I'm, I'm just saying, though. We, we Going by your statement, we really not supposed to do nothing. Does that mean I can't walk up a flight of stairs? No, I mean, like, you know, work and do, like... Right? Yeah. So, serve our work. I can't get paid for work. What else can I not do on the Sabbath? Let's see. Because we got to stop running with things that we may have heard and let's see what the Bible actually says, all right? So we don't be...
Because the Bible never said you can't make a sandwich on the Sabbath. Yeah, but, no, nothing. but the Bible said this though, read. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So what does it say? That we're not supposed to buy and sell on the Sabbath day. So y'all bought that stuff today, right? Today is the Sabbath day. God said today keep your money in your pocket. That's what he it's said. It's only day off. <laughs> At the end of the day, though, you, you get off, right? Huh? You get off every other day, right? When oh. you, you clock in and clock out. Right. I clock in at 8 in, I have to be to work at 8 in the morning. Okay. Between 10 and 1 at night. 10 and 1 at night. Okay, so even in that time frame, you can still go buy and sell. No, I can't because I'm at work. I'm at Amazon. You can't go buy and do nothing. So you don't pay any bills at all during the week? No. You don't buy any food during the week? You know, it goes up my account automatically. So you don't buy any food during the week? So you just live in the house with no furniture, don't buy anything, and don't do nothing. My property not been had. I don't buy no new. I'm so you don't buy or spend anything. The only day that you spend money in your come on, sis. That's my only day. The only, I understand days. that. I'm not Every knocking week, that. But I'm just literally saying. Varies. Right. I'm not knocking that. I can respect that. Just the only day off. But literally, you're telling me you don't spend any money any other day of the week. And then you just told me the Sabbath day you really not supposed to do anything. So when do you spend money? When I'm off. God said don't do it on Saturday. I know. You understand? That's what it comes down to. We got to make sure we, we, we got to make our schedule according to God. According to what he wants us to do. We, we say we love God. You understand? We got to just imagine how many times we walk away from the Bible, walk away from God, or make faces. Imagine if God did that to us. Bring it out. Imagine if Christ did that to us. When I said you have to make your schedule according to God, you was like, uh, it's kind of hard. But we always want his grace though. We want his grace though. Yeah. But we gotta make sure we gotta stop making excuses too. We gotta stop making excuses. What if God say, Well, I, I didn't stop that car from hitting you because I was busy. I was busy doing this. I, I didn't say that bullet from hitting you because I was busy doing that. Wow. We gotta stop doing the things to God that we don't want him to do to us. Right. You understand? I was brought up in the church up in Georgia, right? So but brought up in the church shows us that like by, by you saying that, and no offense. Being brought up in the church, obviously they didn't teach you the things that are according to the Bible. They did, but... You just choose not to do it. You just, when you grow up, you just choose to do what you want to do. So what is it? Things happen like what? Right, but you say you're off on Saturday, right? It varies, like today is my off day. So, but sometimes you don't uh, be off on Saturday, right? So according to God, God said you can't work or buy and sell on the Sabbath day. So guess what? You need to put your faith in the Most High. Try to get you another job that gets you off on Sabbath. Why not do that? And you never know. You obeying God can give you the schedule that you want during the week. So you can actually go buy stuff that you quote unquote don't buy at all. Don't do anything during the week. I've never heard of that in my entire life. You've never went to a fast food restaurant on a Tuesday. How'd you buy it? I had to be to work at 8 in the morning. How'd you buy it? What do you mean? How'd you I buy it? My money. Spent your money. So you buy everything on Saturday? No, I'm just saying I buy it. That's buy what you just said, though. Uh, today is the only day I'm off, so I'm whatever right? I need. Right? I understand that today. I'm not knocking it today. You're not about to play some extra. I know that you what buy you it during the week. I don't, I don't be off on every Saturday. This is my first day right. off in. Okay. Oh, okay. So some days you'll be off. Nope. I don't be off on Sunday. I work on Sunday. No, I'm still doing the other days in the week. Right, but I'm saying the other days during the week, your schedule varies. Like Why we come off on a Monday? Right. Come off on a Tuesday. Come... So those days you used to go by, right? Sometimes or do what you gotta do. Or sometimes I'm asleep because I be so tired. But you may do what you gotta do on those days too, right? Which is not nothing wrong with that, right? It's nothing wrong with that. So based off of your schedule, you gotta do what God tells you to do regardless. So let's say you off on a Monday, mm -hmm. try to get a lot of stuff like that on a Monday. That way. On Saturday, you don't have to go and do that stuff. So that's so I told you I gave you the solution to that earlier. I have to wait till I get that solution. I'm gonna leave this right here with you, Philippians 4:13. You gotta stop making excuses. You gotta actually try to put some effort towards doing what God tells us to do. If we do that, everything else will be added unto us. I promise. Read Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So we quote that scripture all the time in church, but then when it comes down to saying, well, do this or do that, we make excuses according to God, what God wants us to do. 
gotta stop doing that. Like for example, whether you're working or you're not working, how does God command women to dress? Clothes on, right? Give me first Timothy 10, 2 and 9. Watch this. You say you were born in the church, right? Raised in the church? Right, grown. But does that mean that, so is God older than you? So does it, doesn't the Bible say respect your elders? So God gave you laws before you came on this planet that you're still supposed to keep. You understand? Watch this read. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. And like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel. What does modest mean? Covered up. So what does the Bible say about what you got on, sis? No, I'm just saying though, no, we have to understand, man. The Bible says that, hey, if let's say that you're a man, right? We, we came in the world with no clothes on though. So we're supposed to just walk around naked. I, I like to get away. So you you don't like you like to walk around naked? Yeah. I hate clothes. <laughs> you I people are bugged out their mind, man. Listen. I people are bugged out their mind, man. Listen. Hey, if you're gonna make crazy statements, we're gonna move on to somebody that really wanna get no, some I'm understanding. The truth, hey, you just say you rather walk around naked. But when it comes winter time in Georgia, what you gonna do? You gonna turn, you gonna have hypothermia. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28, 28, man. Play semantics. Think it's a game. It's not a game. Read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness uh -huh. and blindness uh -huh. and astonishment of heart. God said, because we don't, because we break God's commandments, we make crazy, foolish statements to say that everybody, we came in naked. So, so uh, we're going to leave naked. Well, when you come out naked out the womb, why they put clothes on you then? Bring it out. Why they put clothes on you then? If you're supposed to stay naked. God says that our women are supposed to wear, dress modestly. Our men are supposed to honor their women. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.